Hi guys and welcome into this video where we're going to be discussing how to set up force feedback in iRacing. Now this is something many people overlook or brush on past, grab some settings from Google and move on. But really crafting it for the car, the way you drive, the wheel you're using can really be beneficial. You'll find consistency, trust in the car, you'll get more feeling if there's a problem, if the rears are kicking out. So in this video I'm going to show you how I go about setting it up. First things first, let's head over to the options menu. Okay, if it's your first time here, you're going to probably be a little overwhelmed with how many settings are, but today we're going to be focusing on the force feedback section. Now, obviously this goes without saying, the first thing you need is a wheel that supports force feedback. Here I'm using the Logitech G29, but I've had previous Thrustmasters. This is, um, this is something you just need to set up. It's not worth Googling or finding out. Even, even the same Logitech G29 I've seen varied results on. This is not my first. Okay, so the settings within inside, obviously make sure enable force feedback is checked. Use linear mode. This isn't really applicable for a belt or gear driven wheel. This is more a direct drive wheel, something you've spent a lot of money on. All it, it's basically the strengths and the weaknesses are in the forces are much more extreme. You're not going to be able to feel it through this. It's going to max out the wheel far too often. The only way to be it would be to dampen down the setting so that you're not feeling the, the the weaker forces. So anything like this, anything sub, let's say five dollars $500, you're going to want to leave it unchecked. Okay, reduce force when parked. This really, all it does, when the car's not in motion or in a pit stop or you've come to a stop, the forces are reduced massively. Now, I'm seeing mine is unchecked. Some cars I leave it checked. I'm sure you must have seen it or experienced it. The car rocking back and forth because you're leaning on something dodgy or there's a bit of damage in your car but something's not right and it gets unsettled or if you're hit when you're motionless um th this is really this is a setting that really up to you this isn't going to help performance at all now let's skip over strength i've actually set that to a a more incorrect number for my car and the track just so it's something we can work on but we'll come back to that that's more of a visual thing that we have to do within the car Wheel force, probably the easiest of all the settings. All you really need to do is find out your wheel's max force in Newton meters. Now, this is actually something you can Google and get something helpful. Um, so a direct drive wheel is going to have this a lot higher. Um, basically, just find out from your manufacturer, from the instructions, from the website, what your wheel's maximum Newton more force out, uh, outputs and um, set it here. This helps iRacing break down the outputs from the software to your hardware and if it knows the correct number that's more beneficial okay dampen him now zero would be the most realistic you would be getting an accurate representation of the exact feeling the car is going through in an exact moment it's feeling it now while that sounds perfect it can lead to more extreme cases it's you also want the inputs to be quite smooth now i'm not suggesting having this anywhere near 40 or more percent at all but especially on our let's call these the cheaper end of the wheels your belt gear driven wheels it's nice to have the feeling of friction a little bit of smoothness now i have mine at 15 percent. i would recommend anywhere between 5 and 15 i mean give zero a go if you want um but that's a nice ballpark for you guys to try finding your happy state do a couple of laps in it see how you feel change it up from five say to 15 make the jump see how it feels i quite like this f3 at 15 now i say f3 because one thing you need to remember this these settings i've mentioned so far are for your wheel whether it's enabled or not the wheel force the dampening and the minimum force pretty much all these things are across all of your cars now strength the one we're going to be covering next is per car um, it could be per car per track now I've set mine incorrectly just so we can do a couple of uh, laps and I can show you how I go about setting the correct number um, but first of all let's talk about minforce minforce is probably the one that people get wrong the most this literally is what iRacing is sending your wheel there will be certain percentages or levels of strength that your wheel won't notice now a high-end direct drive wheel one percent um force the wheel's probably going to react to so if anything light's happening and you've set it at zero percent 
i.e. you're telling iRacing that your wheel can feel everything that's sent to it, then you're going to be missing a lot in the low end. Now, this isn't something you can get from feel or driving around. I wouldn't recommend anyway. You're probably going to spend way too much time. So, I will put in the description a link to an app I use. Bear with me and I'll open it now. It's called Wheel Check. And there'll be a link in the description. Here we go. What I'm going to need you to do first of all is come on down to max count. Change this to 200. And then spring force the second drop down from the top. Scroll down till you see step log two, linear force test. Okay, once you click that, keep away from the wheel. What this is doing right now is sending small movements to the wheel in hope that the wheel will move and it, then it will record how much force it was sending th through at the time and break that down into a percent for you so we can determine what the best setting for your wheel is going to be. So we just wait. It can take anywhere from about 30 seconds. It's going to feel like it's not working. There's no go button on the software. There's nothing really to um, kick it off. But once you've picked it, it kicks into action. Hence why I, sent the, I set the max count of 200 first. There you go. I just noticed the wheel moving. Yeah, you can see that in the stream. Okay, once it starts moving, we can close the force feedback test. The wheel check app. Okay, now we've got that closed. We head over to documents. Let me bring that over. Okay, and what we're looking for here is this log file it's just created. You're going to, want to open that up in Excel. Well, anything really, it's just a CSV file. Okay, and the column you want to head over to is Delta X. Scroll on down. And we're looking for anything over zero. This is d the motion detected. Now, I also would recommend running this two or three times. Take an average because I am noticing a slight different result that I got earlier, but my wheel returns, the first non-zero usually returns around 17, 5, 0, 18 for me. I can see it dip in here. Let's run that one more time so you can see. We'll keep that result. Let's run the wheel check app again. Okay, set our max count to 200. Change the spring force to linear force test. Let that run. Try not to touch the wheel while this test is happening. And one thing I've noticed after running this app, after getting all the settings, we're going to want to restart iRacing. Um, whether it's just a Logitech thing, but after running wheel check, iRacing can have issues applying any force feedback. Um, I think where wheel check takes over the the wheel so iRacing loses its connection but it's not a problem you're only going to need to run this wheel check up once once you set up your new wheel or an old wheel you never set up and we're just waiting for it to move sometimes you can feel this isn't working there you go can you see that yes okay let's close the app down once again head to documents now we have two log files let's open the new one Scroll on down, and it's the Delta X column we want. And once again, see, that's what I thought, 1700. Now, for you, obviously I've run this test many times, but run it quite a few times. Now, the number on the far left is the, remove the last two numbers. The first two is the percent you want. So, so sorry, 16%, 16.5%, 17%. So I obviously killed it. I closed the app when it hit 19, so we didn't get any further results because we're looking for minimum, not maximum. So, so 17 is our number here. Now, another test to run that I also find informational is we want to run the wheel check app again. However, this time we're going to change the spring force not to step log two linear force test, but to min force. Okay, and once again, we're just going to wait. However, this test will output its results at the bottom here of the app here we go 16 percent so what i like to do because i am this app is quite old i mean don't, it's been worked on for a very long time but i like to find a number somewhere between the average i get from the sheet and the average i get on that so i've actually got mine set however at 15 but i've spent a lot more time testing but Take your number between the number we just shown using the min force test and the number from the log file. 
and it should be good. Okay, let me just restart iRacing. Bear with me one moment. Okay, let's just fire up a test session. What we're going to do now is work out the strength. Now, this is something that's per car. Now, it can be per car per track, but not, not hugely. Really, only if there is some heavy bumps or something with the track that makes it unique. But really, finding that perfect number, you're going to be fine. Um, I tweak it here and there, depending on the feel I get of the wheel. But this will just give you a great baseline to use for the car. Now, one more thing before I set strength, I want to show you. Come on, I racing. No, I would recommend restarting eye racing after you do your wheel check and make sure wheel check's, wheel check's closed. It just seems to remove eye racing's control over your wheel. As I say, whether that's just my Logitech, but I think it used to happen on my Thrustmaster as well. Same problem. Come on, almost there. Okay. So we head over to options. Now, strengths per car. So you want to make sure that use custom controls for this car is checked. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting this setting over and over again for every car you jump in. So strength, you might set to around 11 in the F3, whereas in the Mazda, it might be eight. But you, if you have this checked, you won't have to worry that changing car is going to affect the setting. You're going to find that nice balance for each car and the setting will stay. This uh, will we'll remember what you had it for for that car. Okay, so what we're going to do is jump into a test. We're going to want to make sure we have our graphical adjustment setting in the bottom right, the black box. Once we've got that open, scroll all the way down till you see FFB strength, force feedback strength. Now this is where we get to drive the car and do something. Now if you've mapped a button for applying um, settings on the uh, black box, that's great because you can do it while driving, otherwise it's just something an auto button is going to appear to the right of that 6.7 far over to the right but what we want to do on these two test laps we want to stay off the curbs we want to just find a smooth couple of laps you can still push but try and find without bumping on curbs without making any major spins I mean choosing their free with the cold tyres wasn't my great choice but I want to show you every car if I can okay so what's happening right now is our force feedback is being detected by iRacing and it's checking for too much, too little. Okay, a spin for good luck there. <laughs> that shouldn't affect the test. It's really more bumps and curbs you're looking for. Man, these cold tyres make this test a lot harder than it used to be. Okay, let's get up to some speed. Fairly soon, we should start seeing iRacing recommending different force feedbacks. Right, don't take this fall. Oh, gently on the curb. But as I say, try and avoid them. Especially anything heavy. There you go. In the bottom right, you're seeing the auto button. So let's select it. So it's recommended 9.7. The auto's popped up again, I'll ignore it for now, set another lap, and we'll see where that number ends up. Man, I should not be looking at the black box. Okay. Now don't get obsessed with the auto button once you've done a couple of laps. It's always going to recommend ups and downs depending on what part of the track you're on, but the average or wherever you find it so let's set that again now it's recommended 10.3 now the setting I changed away from let's get out of the car the setting I changed away from was 10.2 so I'm really happy to see that now let's come out of the car and head over to options where you're going to see that number set there you go so I had it I've been running the F3 all season at 10.2 it's recommended 10.3 which is great shows this is working so it's the setting you do last once you've got your wheel force set your damping in set your min force set set up your strength do a couple of laps I racing will try and best recommend if you hit a curb or anything major happens that's fine just restart head back out 
and iRacing will recommend. You can carry on, but it's it's taking an average of the lap, so you really you want it to be a clean, nice lap. Now, why am I avoiding curbs? Because you want your curbs to have the extreme force feedback feeling. You don't want that on the edge, almost clipping to maximum during usage during normal race conditions. It's something you want for the extreme to make sure you're detecting something that's not perfect. You know, heavy feeling into the curbs, and yeah, um, it will really help. It will really help with consistency. Um, any questions, guys? Anything you didn't understand? If you've got a custom wheel and it's not working for you, hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to help. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.